Wrestling fans, promoters, wrestlers, and anyone who enjoys pro wrestling now have something new to be excited about. The Wrestling Fans International Association, the WFIA, is back. WFIA is an association that exists to promote, grow, and support professional wrestling throughout the world. Membership is free. Your membership includes a free digital bi-monthly publication of the Wrestling Fan News newsletter, association updates, voting privileges, and much more. Please go to thewfia.org, that's T-H-E-W-F-I-A.org, and become a member today. Hello everyone, this is Brian Ferguson, the host of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I want to tell you about a new podcast out called Fouls Count Anywhere. It is a classic pro wrestling podcast that brings you the legends of wrestling with true wrestling fans Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. They bring on guests that are legends in this business as well as wrestlers of today, promoters, referees, you name it. They have them on there, folks. And I encourage you to listen to them if you're on YouTube, watch them. They drop every Saturday, they have their podcast, and they drop it in the afternoon. So look forward to that podcast coming out. Falls Count Anywhere podcast with Chris DiCarlo and Charlie Turner. Folks, you will not be disappointed. I guarantee it. And enjoy the podcast. Enjoying another edition of Bumps and Thumps, the talk of wrestling. I'm Brian Ferguson. My guest today is a star on the independent circuit. He is currently the Mid States heavyweight wrestling champion and competes throughout the states of Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas. You probably name it around here, and he's done it. So I want to welcome in the smoking ace, Luke Langley. Luke, thanks for coming on. Well, thank you very much for having me, Brian, and I appreciate you stretching the definition of star to include me. Thank you. Hey, you know, I've watched you uh, over the last couple of years when I started going to uh, Mid-States, Aaron Harrison was the first time I went to one, and actually Brian Thompson told me I should go to that event, and I did, and I was not disappointed, and you have... You've grown leaps and bounds since then. You're the heavyweight champion. You know, you had a match here recently in uh, in Springfield, Missouri here a couple of weeks back. Mm-hmm. And it was it was awesome. And I think you, the match you had, the best match I've seen you with, honestly, Luke, is when you did uh, that match with Must See TV. That which was a great one? match. <laughs> which one? Uh, the one uh, in Springfield back in... Uh, I want to say June or July of of last okay. year was that was probably the rematch because uh, the first one we went to uh, two time limit draws so okay um, yeah no Musty TV uh, is one of my favorite opponents uh, yeah you know definitely not not as experienced uh, although he's been at it for quite a while but he he gears yeah. grows by leaps and bounds every time I'm in the ring with them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's cool that you uh, associate me so closely with Mid-States because that's actually where I had my first ever professional wrestling match was at the Harrison, Arkansas Fairgrounds back in 2011. So oh, wow. it's cool okay. to kind of be, you know, full circle. Like you talk about seeing me grow. Well, the, those people who've been coming to the fairgrounds there, like they have literally seen me from ground yeah. zero. So yeah. uh, Mid-States wrestling will always be kind of special to me for that. Yeah, I mean... I tell you, uh, the the mid states promotion, and I I, I haven't been to a couple other ones. I've been to WLW back up in Troy, but I know you work with New Breed and some other promotions. Uh, but I'm always really uh, what do I want to say. Mid states always brings a great crowd. It has a great atmosphere, and you guys put on such a great card. Whether it's in Springfield, whether it's in Harrison, wherever you're at, it's always a, a top-notch card. And that's kudos to you guys because, you know, you don't you don't have to put on the, the, the show you do, but you do because you love it and you can tell. Well, 
Well, I think that, you know, yeah, you say we don't have to put on the show we do. I, to me, I feel like we kind of owe it to the fans that that bought a ticket. Mm -hmm. I always approach the right. attitude of like, yeah, there are tons of regulars who've been to every show in Springfield or have been going to the Harrison Fairgrounds for years, but chances are there's going to be at least a couple of people in the crowd who only know professional wrestling from what they've seen on television. So we owe it to them to, you know, we don't have to deliver the same type of product or, or right. necessarily, but we need to have those people who it's, it's their first experience with live wrestling. I need those people leaving saying that was amazing. When's the next one? So yep. uh, I, I feel, I consider that my obligation and, uh, yeah, wow. Drew Jay's done a wonderful job promoting. That's why the fairgrounds are always full. Springfield's sold out. I forget how many times in a row now, and uh, it's a credit yeah. to the roster that shows out every time. Oh yeah, and I didn't mean that in a disrespectful way when I said. No, I, I didn't take it. I certainly didn't. Take okay, it I, I mean, there's there's cards at other events, promotions that don't put on that type of caliber of show Sorry. that you guys do. And I'm not disrespecting anybody. I'm just saying you put on a top-notch card, and, and and that's commendable for you and the whole roster and the and the promoter Jason Jones, Space Cowboy, and and you know. Uh, but I want to get back to you, sir, if we could, please. So, Luke, you talked about starting in the business back in 2013. Did you say 20, or 11? 2011 was my okay. Was 2011. Let's talk about that. You grew up in Kansas City area. I'm assuming you're Kansas. I, I read a little bit about you. You you did some. Uh, you're you're a college man. You went to. I am. I went to Kansas State University. Uh, yep. You might know them most recently. Literally, you know, less than an hour before we record this, they just uh, polished off Michigan State in overtime to to make the Elite Eight. So very awesome. proud of the boys there. But yes. Uh, Grew up uh, in the Kansas City area, uh, actually born in Fort Worth, Texas, but, you know, I'm, I'm a Kansas City and raised. So, yeah, I um, yeah, went to Kansas State University, uh, you know, got a degree from there, um, you know, moved back to the Kansas City area. And then, you know, maybe maybe about uh, a year or so after I graduated is when I discovered independent wrestling. Or, no, I wouldn't say discovered, but went, actually like got involved in it yeah okay so your experience of that now were you an athlete as far as uh high school and and did sports and stuff like yeah, that or? so I, I was not particularly accomplished uh, like I, I was not like a star football player but I did play football for years and even you know going back to like the sixth grade and uh, I was an amateur wrestler. I've actually been amateur wrestling since like the fifth grade. I never like took it seriously. I maybe mm -hmm. would do like one or two meets a year. It was more just kind of to keep me busy a couple nights a mm -hmm. week. I remember because my only exposure to wrestling was from like watching WCW with my dad the first night of like, you know, amateur wrestling practice, you know, uh, like I tried to put a guy in like a Boston crab or something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I have that athletic background. I, I promise I'm a way better professional wrestler than I ever was a, an amateur wrestler or a football player. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's interesting. So talk about your training a little bit, if you would, please. Uh, who trained you, got you going into the business? Sure. So um the thing that made me say, like, I want to do this was uh, in January of 2011, uh, I went to a show um, uh, of Metro Pro Wrestling here in Kansas. Okay. A very high quality promotion. They tape local TV. We're on Metro Sports up here. And, like, I was just really captured uh, by the, like, energy of the live wrestling product. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had you know, kind of entertained thoughts of it going back to high school when I got back into wrestling and kind of followed it. But this made me say like, oh, I've got to figure out a way to do this. Um, wound up, you know, through my dad meeting a guy at the gym, wound up meeting a guy named Tribal Warrior Angel Sky Call, um, who was a, a local independent wrestler and met him after a show in Topeka that I went to. Uh, he said, come to the next one, help set up the ring. I can show you a couple things. So I learned how to bump. 
um, you know, take some basic, uh, you know, hip toss, uh, arm drag, run the ropes a little bit. And yeah. after working out with him a couple of times, I realized like I, I need to figure out a way to get more ring time than just before shows. So uh, I went on uh, the old Google machine and, you know, found uh, there was a guy named the good Reverend Chad Sullivan uh, who was training people in Basiris, Kansas. Um, so I called him up and he said he was still training people a couple nights a week and, uh, passed my trial with him because I already knew how to bump, um, you know, which was physically taxing, but it wasn't anything beyond my capability. And, uh, yeah. after that was able to start training, you know, I think we were doing Mondays and Wednesdays for a couple hours a night. And then shortly thereafter, you know, we started going for like four hours on Sundays too. So, for that, uh, you know, spring through the summer of 2011, I was getting about eight hours of ring time every week there with uh, okay. the rip, Chad Sullivan. So I credit him as my, uh, I guess, first initial full-time trainer and travel warrior Angel Sky Call again was the guy, the guy who broke me in initially. Okay. After you got trained out, started getting out into the, the circuit there, uh, where... I guess, where did you get, finally get that niche, that rhythm of it's flowing well, it's it's going well, this is something I'm really... Sure. Wanting. So, I mean, honestly, um, it took a while before I feel like I really, like, caught on and, like, hit my groove as a performer. And wrestling is a lot different than uh, normal sports because it's, you know your athletic prime doesn't sync up with your prime in wrestling as much because so much of it is like a mental game and just knowing when and and why you're doing stuff as opposed to just going out there and doing the most athletic shit possible. Uh, can I swear yeah. on you? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Um, it's fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so uh, you know, right away... Um, me and uh Graham Bell, who was the one of the guys that I trained with, who we became a full-time tag team just kind of by convenience because we both realized like we need to just get out and wrestle as much as possible. So uh like I said, started wrestling for Mid States Wrestling, met some people there that led us to branch into Oklahoma. And we, we were mostly doing tag uh tag matches with each other and um and honestly, like we would just kind of go anywhere that would book us just to get reps. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't really have any like good mentor, I would say, guiding us for those first couple of years. Now that mm -hmm. would change a bit when we made our way to Lawton, Oklahoma and a company called IZW. We met a uh, a gentleman named Jermaine Johnson, who sadly passed away last spring. But he was probably the first like... <sighs> You know, I don't want to say vet, but like, you know, he was like the first guy that was like talking about wrestling at like a higher level. And like mm -hmm. we immediately after just being around him, picking his brain, getting his feedback, we immediately just became more confident performers, as tag team wrestlers and as promos, things like that. Um, overall, though, I think it really clicked for me. Um, and let this be a lesson to any aspiring wrestlers or anyone starting out like you never stop training. Um yeah. In 2016, here in Kansas City, uh, uh, Derek McQuinn and Trevor Murdoch opened up a school that was unfortunately fairly short-lived, but I started going there two or three nights a week uh, to train with Murdoch, and also uh, Mark Sterling was still around then. I mean, okay. he's still around now, uh, but he was uh, more active then, and that's also where I reconnected with Mike Seidel, who's become a really good friend of mine, and I've actually known Mike uh, and Mark since like the very beginning, because I met them at Chad's place way back in the day. But I credit working with Mike so frequently in that summer of 2016 to really like cleaning me up as an in-ring performer. Not necessarily just from like a technical perspective, but in my ability to like communicate stuff in the ring and, you know, be able to talk people through spots and mat entire matches step by step and, and like really... Um, yeah, that that skill set that I picked up from him there uh, is something I take a lot of pride in to this day. Um, yeah, my ability to to really push people like past what they think they're capable of in the ring. Uh, yeah, you know, really um, 
you know, showcase what they do well and and not expect them to memorize a whole bunch of stuff because, you know, that's, you know, no fun and beyond people's capabilities a lot of times. But um, yeah, I, I'm really giving you a, a long answer to a short question. But yeah, I would no, say- No, please. The Keep switch going. started to flip in 2016 from a mindset perspective. And then as like 2017 and then today as like, I really got my butt into shape in the gym. Um, yeah. That's really when like, you know, the- the body and mind started to sync up. And I think, you know, that 26, 2017 stretch was when I really started to kind of form myself as you see me today. Did you ever wonder what could have been with the AWA had things gone differently? Had their fortunes gone differently? Had certain wrestlers not left and perhaps more money would have been at the disposal of the Ganyas? Well, wonder no further. You can go to Brad Drake's YouTube channel and experience the 1987 Super Mod for yourself. As Brad Drake starts off in May 1987, along with Greg Gagne, Baron Von Rotschke, Vern Gagne himself, Nick Bockwinkle, Larry Zabisco, Kurt Hennig, and a slew of others as he plays and saves the AWA. I, I'll tell you too, your ability to work with people is, is quite remarkable because like I said, we talked about Bus CTV, uh, Colton Vaughn, but you also had a guy that I just recalled while you were talking, uh, Sam Stackhouse. That guy is humongous. And really you guys had a fantastic match together. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, when the guy walked out, I thought this Luke's going to mop him with the floor, you know, and, and but. I give credit to him and you, but you guys put on one heck of a match together. Well, thank how you. is that? You bet. But how working with different people like that, different sizes, you know, one guy could be like built like yourself. Then you got guys that are, you know, a hundred pounds more in weight than you. How do you, how do you prepare for that or how do you adjust for that kind of, of, of matches? Uh, you know, that's a good question. I, I, I think it's really just a matter of, you know, having in mind, like, what does this person do well? And mm -hmm. I feel like I'm pretty adaptable. Like I can have a really fast pace back and forth athletic match. And sometimes like I've heard people say like, well, I'm, I'm like, I'm nervous because I got to work Luke. I better get like my cardio up or something. And it's like, yeah, I'm, we're, we're probably going to be pretty active out there. But mm -hmm. I've, I feel like I adapt my pace. Like I can change uh, speeds pretty well. And with a big guy like Sam, you know, the match should be slowed down a little bit because, you know, he's 400 pounds almost. And, you know, yeah. if he hits me once, that should stop me for a good bit, you know. And, um just to bring it back to Sam specifically, I've known Sam since 2012. Uh, he was one of the first people that Grandma and myself met uh, when we started wrestling in Oklahoma. Super nice guy. Has always been a very talented performer. Uh, very mm -hmm. surprisingly athletic for, for you know, just yes. really what he looks like. And uh, he's really yeah. put it together the last couple of years. And you see him yeah. getting a lot more exposure nationally, like through GCW and stuff like that. So yeah. I was thrilled to finally be able to have a one-on-one -on -one match with Sam. We'd never faced each other in just a straight up singles match. So it was cool yeah. to finally do it after 10 years as like the prime yeah. version of ourselves. Yeah. No, that guy, I, I, he really, I'll be honest, he really surprised me. And I even told uh, after the show, I talked to him for a minute. I talked to, uh, Jason Jones, I talked to Stephen E, and I gave that guy and both of you guys just so much kudos because for how big he was, I was I didn't think the match would be last one five minutes, and it was like I think it was like twenty or twenty five minutes. It was it was a good match. Uh, it, well, thank you. I, I think we might have been it might have been more like fifteen because we started it pretty okay. Hard. Well, but it was longer part, than I yeah, thought. It was it was a certainly a. It, a worthy match, yeah. I agree. One of my highlights of last year, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's talk a little bit about your your nickname, the Smoking Ace. How did that come about? Sure. So uh, it all kind of derives from like uh, you see my, my uh, 
you know, my background working for Black Diamond Industries, you know, kind of this uh, gun for hire, um, which was actually something that Grandma and myself had come up with uh, back in 2016. We pivoted our tag team into being uh, called the Diamond Dogs, and we kind of adopted this mercenary gimmick and um, even splitting off as singles guys in the in the you know ensuing years we realized like we could still be those kind of mercenary characters and Graham's kind of gone on and he's adapted and done his own thing um but uh I've uh, just kind of kept that uh that persona of you know kind of the mystery man you know gun for hire mercenary and um I honestly feel like the smoking ace might have been something I just like threw out randomly in a promo as a nickname for myself because like uh I think our individual names were like uh, the mercenary Graham Bell and the professional Luke Langley. Uh, <laughs> and then like, I, I, at some point, like, a, you know, and uh, I think it derives from, you know, uh, Japanese wrestling. They call like the, the top guy in the promotion, the ace. And then obviously okay. there's, there's the movie smoking aces and I carry yep. I've, I'm yeah. shooting a cigar on the way to the ring. So, yeah. you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it honestly was one of those things that like, uh, I probably threw it out as a nickname and I was like, I kind of like the ring to that. And then I had told the announcer, let's go with this and, and roll with it, you know, um, yeah. you know, um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's like a lot of things in wrestling. You just kind of throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks and people seem to like it. So, uh, yeah. Even, uh, even it, like honestly, like you know, it's not like the movies any like great shakes necessarily. It's fine, but it's you know, it just, it just <laughs> rolls off very well, I guess. So there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Talk about mid states earlier. You're the mid states heavyweight wrestling champion. Mm -hmm. You also work with other promotions. So that title, I mean, how long have you had it? I guess I, I, you've had it for a while. Yeah, I've actually held it for over a year now. Uh, I won it, I believe, on May 12th uh, in Springfield uh, mm -hmm. from Gary Roosevelt Graham. Um, and Gary, that, that was a very special moment uh, for me just because Gary is someone I've known since my you know first ever you know show performing on. And I actually had my uh, fourth ever match against Gary uh, at Space Cowboys okay. Boxing Gym in Harrison, actually. Um, so it was cool to be in the main event and in a title match and and to win the title from him. Um, but yeah, uh, held the belt for a year, uh, defended it most recently against Jeremy Wyatt on uh, March 11th. So uh, by getting through yes. him, that meant that I would hold on to it for the one calendar year. So <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, the, obviously, uh, defended it against opponents again uh, of all shapes and sizes um whether it's in Springfield or in Harrison uh crowds have always been great very excited for every title defense so uh I've really enjoyed uh you know hopefully representing the championship uh, in the best yeah. possible way I think you do a great job with it the times I've seen you with it you also work for other promotions new breed wrestling for a cause Mm -hmm. uh, these promotions around the, in Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois. Uh, what's that like for you traveling around like that? I know it's got to be a little hard on you going from place to place. And sure, uh, so I, I'm uh, I'm not the road warrior that some guys are. Truthfully, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I could tell you some stories that you know would like make the hair on your neck stand up from like when me and Graham were driving back from like Austin, Texas, you know, all through the night after a Sunday show and then yeah. you know, going to work on Monday morning with, you know, three hours of sleep in the backseat of a car and stuff or driving nonstop to New York city and back, you know, leaving Friday after work and getting back Sunday afternoon. And yeah. um, I, I don't do those as much anymore. I might make my way down to Texas, you know, here and there. Um, what I try to do uh, is like, like any, you know, professional wrestler with assault. I'll try to stack bookings so that I'm getting, you know, multiple shots, you know, along the route. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, especially now, like it, uh, I get a lot of uh, joy out of, you know, yeah, I'll take a booking, but it'll also give me a, a chance to like see my friend I haven't seen in a while down in Oklahoma. Like, I'm, like my boy, uh, Arthur, who I met, you know, he was a manager back in 
the 2012, 2013 days there in Tulsa and he lives in Oklahoma City now. So it's like, well, if I take this Friday booking, I can stay with this one friend and then I can hit Texas on Saturday, but then it's just a short drive up to Oklahoma City. I can crash with Arthur, get breakfast with him. You know, is it, I try to kind of, uh, you know, mix the business and personal a little bit just to kind of break up the trip and also, uh, you know, kind of get some added value out of it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a little bit. We could, Luke. Let's talk. You've mentioned some people that you've worked with. Who's probably right now probably one of the people that you really gel well with working with either as a tag team or as an opponent with with you in the ring sure um i mean i could give you a whole uh list of people here honestly uh i uh we've mentioned ctv so i've got to go back to him for a second we've had three matches against each other and uh I, remember, I told him after our, our third one, which was in Harrison, it was another time limit draw. Um, I remember just like consciously like thinking like during the match at some point, just like Colton's getting a lot better, you know, like, uh, I mean, he's always been good in every interaction I've had with him, but yeah, like he's such a great athlete. He's so relentlessly positive, like in the locker room. And when it comes to like pitching ideas off each other, he's always up for whatever I want to do. And, uh, I feel like I'm pretty good at showcasing him in the best possible light. Mm -hmm. um, See, so yeah, every time we get in the ring, it's electric. Um, uh, I got to give love to uh, an old rival, uh, a man named Double D, who we haven't wrestled each other in quite some time, but uh, we had like nine matches in like a year and a half period from like 2017 2018 maybe into 20 early 2019 where we were wrestling each other all across the state of oklahoma in different companies and uh when i kind of split off and was establishing myself as a singles guy you know toward the end of 2017 and through 2018 mm -hmm. uh every time we got in the ring it was just fantastic chemistry i guess we did have a match in january of last year for core pro wrestling and it was like riding a bike we hadn't touched in a couple of years and we went out and yeah. did about 20 minutes and yeah just a guy who's <laughs> super easy to gel with um yeah we don't have as long a history but i uh, i have to mention uh john cross who is a uh a very talented man uh he's no longer actively wrestling but uh he was a staple of the like Tulsa area independent wrestling scene for a while. And uh, okay. my match in 2019 with him, uh, that was actually like his comeback match um, was, is probably okay. still my, my most noteworthy singles match ever. And we, we since had a, a, a sequel to that match, which was also excellent, but uh, that one will always have a special place in my heart. And uh, you know, it, we don't have as long a history as well, but, Jeremy Wyatt uh, is a dude who I've always looked up to tremendously. Just going back to that first Metro Pro Wrestling show I've attended, we just had our first one-on-one -on -one match against each other, but we've actually tagged several times uh, up in Kansas City uh, for okay. Jeremy Wrestling. And, uh, you know, just he's such a talented wrestler. It's very easy to gel with him, whether he's on your side or he's an opponent. So, yeah. Also want to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Nasty, uh, another guy that I've known for a long time. Uh, you've seen, might have seen him perform it uh, down there in Harrison, but just a, a great natural yeah. performer, a great athlete, good size, and just such a great grasp of his character. And it's always a, a blast to, to hook it up with him. So yeah. Um, yeah, Duke Cornell's another guy that I've started working more regularly recently in the last couple of years always have really good chemistry with him it feels like um yeah the, the, there's a bunch of guys that uh yeah. you know have a special place to me so hopefully i've given you uh, another you, yeah no you're, <laughs> yeah you're you're great no i i enjoy the inside i really do we've talked about some other pro have you ever worked outside of the united states like japan or maybe australia or somewhere I, ha I have not yet. That is okay. certainly uh, a goal of mine. Uh, obviously, Japan is kind of like uh, the cliche answer for India, yeah. I think, but it's a cliche for a reason. And, um, you know, never say never. Uh, mm -hmm. The opportunities that you hear 
you hear about don't seem to be as uh, abundant since COVID. But now that we're kind of playing right. that, hopefully there might be yeah. more opportunities for them to, you know, to to get your foot in the door over there. I know yeah. my, my friend Graham obviously got to go over there for uh, zero one uh, after doing one of their trio camps. So hopefully, you know, if another opportunity like that presents itself, I'll be in position to yeah. do it. Well, well, I mean, that's, I'm sure you're a busy guy. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about some upcoming events that uh, you'll be a part of. I know you're different promotions across uh, a few states. So if you got some events coming up, uh, please uh, Certainly. fire I'll, away. I'll go ahead and plug some. I'm not sure when this episode is going to be dropping, but let's just start in April. Uh, okay. I'll be competing in a tournament uh, April 1st and then April 2nd uh, for Tri-States Wrestling. Uh, those will be in uh, kind of up in northwest Missouri. Uh, okay. Most of the Friday shows in Bethany, Missouri. Um, the big one coming up uh, April 8th will be here in Kansas City. That'll be Central States Wrestling. Um, you recognize that name, Central States Wrestling. I'm sure it's a name that yeah. carries the weight up here. Um, yeah. But uh, this rebranded version is absolutely on fire. Um, they've sold out uh, their last several shows. They had to move to a smaller venue because the National Guard Armory uh, they were running in before uh, had pipes burst due to freezing and flooded. So uh, now they're a different uh, armory. But they were yeah. standing only uh, over 500 people uh, at their wow. show in February. So wow. really excited to... Uh, yeah. To, to, to go back and wrestle for them. Um, I'm also going to be taking on a, a gentleman named Mike Outlaw from St. Louis, who uh, we've wrestled once before. He's immensely talented. The last match was very enjoyable, so I'm excited to, to have a sequel with him on, on April the 8th. Uh, I'll be at Core Pro Wrestling uh, Friday, April 14th. They're in uh, Sand Springs, Oklahoma. And then I I think I'm going to cap the year with, or excuse me, cap, cap the year, cap April. Uh, April 29th, I'll be doing a show uh, in Claremore, Oklahoma. It's simply titled The Clash in Claremore. And then the following day, uh, April 30th, Sunday afternoon, uh, I'll be at Diamond State Wrestling there in Springdale, Arkansas. Arkansas, there's how you say that. Busy, busy man. You're a busy man. You have a full time job. And then, then, and uh, and this yeah you know it's uh it, like i said i don't grind like uh a lot of guys do on the indies uh you know I, I stay busy i try to fill every weekend if i can do multiple shows you know fantastic you know just to try to uh yeah. you know spread the pain of the gas money and stuff you know hit multiple yeah. stuff along the way um but uh yeah no if, if i've got an open you know, Saturday or Sunday, I'm always looking to fill it. So we, we might see more added under that, you know, before too long. So so, I got to tell you one thing. You're a very well-spoken young man. Oh, I well, will say you. You, you have that, you have that voice and that uh, ability to, when people are listening to you, you, you at least why I see you, you draw them in and they want to pay attention to what you're saying. So. Well, that, that's kind of a, kind of a Jer Chris Jericho thing, you know. He likes he can draw the people in with his. I, I don't know, have the speak. gift for I don't have the gift for like catchphrases or witty insults or anything like that that someone like a Jericho would have. But uh, I am told I have an excellent radio voice. Uh, you do have an excellent radio. No I mean, you could be a podcaster too no, and probably no, draw millions. No one, no one <laughs> knows what their own voice sounds like, you know, because it sounds different to you. But that's that's right. what I've been told. So. Uh, you do. Yeah, that's very, very kind words. Thank you, Ryan. Well, you bet. You bet, Luke. Hey. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. Smoking Ace, Luke Langley, the Mid States Heavyweight Wrestling Champion. Thank you for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. It was a real pleasure, Brian. Thank you. All right, folks, if you're watching, thank you. If you're listening, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, Please do so. And folks, get out to these independent wrestling promotions. They are fantastic. And, and Luke is a prime example of that. And thanks again one more time, Mr. Luke Langley. Thanks for coming on, sir. Anytime. All right. And we'll talk to you soon, folks. Bye.